is there a person that runs AI governance? Is it a group of people? Is it, you know, what, wh what works? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question and it's still very nascent. So there, there's not a lot of data out there on success, even though there's a lot of trials going on across lots of organizations. So what works is a little bit, uh, is a, is a little bit of a crystal ball. Um, I, I'll suggest that unfortunately, the same thing that worked when we started talking about automation projects and the same thing that we that work when we started talking about about machine learning and the same it, it's the same it's just the next tech kind of along along that path and that at most large corporations we find that unfortunately everyone needs to be involved right which is never a recipe for moving fast but you need to have a you need to have a risk management framework like NIST or Databricks probably need to layer in a maturity model so that it's not just uh, it's, it's not just an academic exercise um, and then make sure that all of the teams are at the proverbial table um, so that they can ensure there are guardrails and unfortunately that's technical that's legal that's leadership that that's all of them Snail, what do you is it, it are we having get everybody involved is that or is that gonna be too big of a party no, Michael's right, right? So you generally have, you know, an AI governance council or a steering committee that includes folks from all these different groups. There's typically an intake process around uh, AI use cases. And then there's some type of risk assessment framework. Maybe it's the European Union to triage use cases. Now, the question is who actually leads it? So I've seen legal departments, much like with data privacy, you might have the data privacy lawyers who lead the uh, who lead AI governance, right? Well, I was at the International Association of Privacy Professionals last year in Brussels. Lots of data protection officers extending their GDPR roles to cover AI governance as well. But then you've got the CIO and the technologists who also have to be involved because these uh, the technologies are changing so fast, it's hard for the regulations to keep up. So AI agents are great, right? The European Union talks about human accountability and human in the loop, but these agents are trying to take humans out of the loop. So really... Tying together technology and the uh, legal department is extremely important, along with the lines of business. Thank you. Jeff, what, how, do, how do we approach this? Well, I think I, I have to agree with Michael and, and Sunil. Um, you got to really involve everybody, which is also a recipe for problems, right? You can't move fast if you, if you involve everyone. I don't know that there's a really good solution here. I, I'm not really sure what to suggest, right? Because if you if you don't involve everyone, you risk having a a, a substandard solution. If you do involve everyone, um, how do you get everything done correctly, right, uh, and quickly? I, I like I like your I, I sort of like your honesty and and you're saying, hey, this is a bit of a struggle. Jamal, what have you seen? Yeah, so I, I I support what Sunil and Michael are saying, and I hear the concerns from Jeff, and these are the same kind of conversations we're having with stakeholders all the time, right? But look, here's the truth. Effective AI governance does require collaboration across various organizational levels. It doesn't mean that every single person needs to be involved, but it does mean there needs to be collaboration from every single department. And there's three key things that we're doing that's really helping us. So number one is defining clear law roles and responsibilities. If we assign specific AI governance tasks to the relevant departments, making sure there's accountability so they have clarity when it comes to the decision-making processes, that's really going to help them move forward confidently. Number two is make sure that we foster cross-functional collaboration by encouraging regular communication between the technical teams, the legal departments, and even the executive leadership so they can all align on these AI initiatives, meet the organizational goals, and maintain those ethical standards. And finally, provide specialized training. We need to offer training programs that equip all stakeholders with the necessary knowledge to manage their specific AI-related risks effectively. And that way, everybody's empowered, everybody comes to the table, and everybody contributes to the ongoing goals and missions of the company effectively with the AI governance in place. I like a lot of what you're saying. Um, we, AI governance, you, you can argue, is relatively new, and, and some may debate that in terms of the machine learning on that. But, but for most organizations, AI governance is new. But governance is not new. And I'm going to pull lessons that we've had for the last 20 years in terms of the worlds of information governance. And we strongly believe that we've seen it has to be a steering committee. Uh, let's put together a charter. Let's get together roles and responsibilities. Let's get, you know, legal compliance, risk, 
obviously IT, development, technology, data governance, information governance. Let's get all the players early in the room to start with. I think sometimes there's a tendency, especially from the technology teams, like I don't want to really bring the legal people in because they're just going to stop me and I got to get this out. And, and I appreciate that. But we coach a lot of legal teams saying you want to be there because actually you're going to make this go faster because you can help them avoid mistakes. You can help them, them redoing. And, and yeah, it is a little awkward to get a good group together and who's doing what. But if you could do that initially, we find these initiatives, AI governance goes much faster. You can get to production much more quickly because there's a role for everybody. There's different, you know, you know, the legal can talk, the compliance can talk about the emerging regulations, the technology, you know, the business units. We, we want them all part of this. And so don't try and do this with a small group and then tell everybody later, go big early and, and, and drive that. Cause that's, uh, and we've seen it for years in, in other governance. This is for, for, from our perspective, this is not a new lesson. This is a very tried and, and true area to be able to do that. Um, yeah. I just wanted to say, I, I think you're exactly right there. Right? If you're not doing data governance, right. If you're not doing data privacy, right. Um, you're probably not going to be doing AI right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're talking, yeah, we really, we, information governance, you know, I'm going to take a talk about a, uh, you know, a plain old topic called records management. Well, a lot of that, you know, the, the data quality issues that organizations are looking with retrieval augmented generation, which we think is how most organizations will be using it, really have the root in good records management or data management or, you know, that goes out there. So a lot of these, core areas and somebody else was going to add something to yeah i was going to jump in again if, if you look at what's worked historically for new initiatives absolutely steering committee i think all of us aligned and some some flavor of that but, but also leadership and leadership kind of in the trenches right organizations that have somebody in charge of their automation fill in the blank center of excellence guild team whatever have far greater success rates. And I think that it's the same lesson is going to be applied to AI when there is somebody managing the use case intake form or process. And there is somebody, it's usually the same person evangelizing AI across the organization. They're going to have great, they're leading this, the or at least preparing the, uh, the governance committee. They're going to have greater success.